Hi, everybody. This is Paul Bryan of UX Strat. Today, I'm talking with Jingjing Tan, who is the senior UX researcher for Uber. Hi, Jingjing. Welcome to the Stratosphere. Hi, Paul. Thanks so much for having me. Sure. Well, our topic today is going to be designing post-COVID products and services. Uh, but before we get into that, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you know, I love talking to strangers, and that's why I am in research. And I have been in research for the past decade or so. Um, right now, I work as a senior UX researcher at Uber, um, specializing in more of marketing products um, for Uber Eats. So specifically for restaurant owners um, and touching up on some of the eater experiences as well. Um, prior to Uber, I had um, worked at a couple of different companies with a mix of products and also service companies. Um, and so it was really good to get that breadth of um, you know, perspectives and also look into different types of products and different industries. So yeah, really excited to be talking, to be a part of this conference and to be meeting a lot of awesome people from around the world. Outstanding. Uh, well, which kind of research are you most involved with? Is it usually um, discovery, strategy, evaluative, or what's your general focus? Yeah, good question. So um, my focus is more on the innovation side. So more strategy research, um, more upstream research. So that spans uh, exploratory and also descriptive. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't do some evaluative or concept testing, but I think the majority of our focus, I would say 90% of our focus is more upstream. Okay, well, I run events. Uh, you're at Uber, which is a ride share service primarily, and you do research. So all this involves lots of coughing, sneezing people. So I imagine, <laughs> that, um, I imagine that the virus and shutdowns and stuff like that have impacted the research profession. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, just as the whole world got shut down, um, we all had to work remotely and I am fortunate that um, I work for a company that is very accommodating to that. Um, but that also means a lot of our work had to migrate online. Um, so prior to COVID, we did a lot more in-person research. Um, so, you know, being able to gather context is so important in our profession. Um, and so being able to visit restaurants and talk to owners and so on, that was a big part of what we did pre-COVID. Um, but during COVID times, we know how important it is to still gather the right strategic insights um, and continue to improve our product. And so, yeah, so we've been doing remote research ever since. Um, I'd love to share some of the learnings, some of the challenges, some of the best practices um, with the attendees on the day of the conference. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of uh, adjusting tools, adjusting processes, adjusting methods um, to fit the current climate. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it's still important to be investing in strategic research at any time, um, COVID or non-COVID. And so it's super important to continue to do that at this time. Yeah, it seems that um, there are a number of different levels of research that are done for products. There's, um, I would consider some of the, like just putting together some questions and asking those digitally or in person, it's gonna work pretty well um, remotely, but other things seem to be very context related and finding clues and uh, things like that that are gonna be more difficult. So what, you know, what thoughts do you have around that? Yeah, I think, you know, there's definitely pros and cons of um, doing research more, more remotely. Um, I think the pro, one of the pros um, that I've experienced is, you know, you get way bigger access to people. So people who usually um, you wouldn't be able to visit or who couldn't travel to, you know, where we are. Um, now with the click of a button, we get to talk to anyone around the world. So I love that aspect of it. Um, but like you said, the con is because now we're talking through a screen, it's a little bit harder to read body language. It's a little bit harder to read kind of the context that people are in. Um, and so fortunately, there are some tools out there that help um, to adapt to these changing methods. So, you know, in the past, if we had to do contextual inquiry, it's now more online. So having people kind of walk us through, show us, do a little bit of show and tell of where they're at, how they do their work, how they um, interact with fellow um, colleagues and so on. 
um, we've had to do that more remotely. Um, and then in terms of more complex processes and being able to understand people's journeys, there are really good visual aids um, and visual tools that are remote friendly. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that as well. And you know, how can you gather, be on the same page with your participants and gather kind of their detailed complex journey process mindsets um, in like a, a remote and visual way. You know, as, as an event business, we're realizing that um, we could have done a lot of things digitally before that we do in person just because it's more fun and, and um, more enjoyable uh, to be with folks and gather with people. Um, but we're finding that a lot of things can also be done remotely and it adds some value in ways like you mentioned, access to people. Um, I'm thinking that for us, we're not going to go back to how it was before. We're going to stay in some kind of a hybrid path moving forward and using some of the things we're learning now to make the experiences better. Do you think in the research field that people are going to do the same? Like, will they go back to the way it was done before? Or do you think it's more a combination? Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be a combination. There's very good pros and cons of the different contexts and settings that we're, we're in, right? So if we're doing more in person, there's a lot more rich contextual information we can gather. But if we're doing remotes, there's better accessibility for people who you couldn't reach before. Um, I think the process also tends to be faster just because, you know, with the push of a button, you can go from one participant to the next and, you know, collaborate with your stakeholders really effectively um, remotely as well. So, yeah, so I think it's really a, a process of, you know, after COVID, evaluating what are the needs of your project, of your, um, your business, and figuring out for each scenario, you know, what are the best tools available? Is it going to be a, a remote only um, project? Is it going to be a combination of remote and in-person sessions? Is it going to be in-person only? Um, I think as researchers, we're pretty good at assessing the needs of specific projects uh, and scenarios to be able to answer that on a case-by-case -case basis. So I'm actually looking forward to kind of the combination of approach moving forward. Um, and yeah, really excited to see what comes out of it. Um, without saying anything proprietary about Uber Eats, um, I imagine that services are going to be kind of different um, moving forward. I, obviously, the research methods are going to be different, but I think some of the outcomes and some of the innovations are going to be around how do we do these things that we did before safely? Uh, do you see, and again, not referring specifically to Uber Eats, but do you see service design changing a lot next year? Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, I think COVID has surfaced a lot of needs um, that we didn't know um, we had before as a, you know, a community, as a, a society. And so definitely there's going to be implications for both how we operate in the world, but also how we study um, those kinds of processes. So um, I'm really, really happy uh, about being in service design, being in research. And I think there's a lot of new things that we can incorporate into how we do things in, in the future. So yeah, excited about that. Definitely. Well, um, I'm looking forward to your talk. UX Strat is going to be online this year. It's going to be September 28th to 30th. And Jing Jing is going to be presenting there. So thanks for your time today, Jing Jing. Thanks so much, Paul. Looking forward to the conference.